Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, yes, you read the title correctly. I am an ex flat earther. I used to believe that the earth was flat, and now I no longer don't. If you want to know exactly how I came to believe that the earth was flat and how I came to fall out of that, that belief, you can check out my last video that I recently uploaded. Go ahead and watch that before watching this video just for a bit of uh, some context. In this video, I want to talk about <laughs> why I know that the earth is not flat. Before you go into the comment se section and try to explain how I'm a shill or how I'm wrong or how the earth is flat and so on and so forth, and before you completely dismiss everything that I'm saying in this, vi in this video, assuming that you've watched the last video already, just please answer this simple question first. Do you believe that the earth is flat because you want it to be flat? And do you think that that bias of you wanting the earth to be flat is perhaps clouding your judgment about what's true and what's not true? And it's potentially causing you to be extremely closed-minded and perhaps even more closed-minded than the people who you refer to as, as sheeple? 99% of the reasons why people think that the earth is flat, they use either elementary reasons or they use bi biblical evidence. So whenever I say elementary evidence, I mean evidence that really could be made by like a two-year-old or like a four-year-old like for for example the earth looks flat therefore it is flat this is like a bad art argument which we'll get into that later and as far as biblical evidence goes um i'm muslim <laughs> i am muslim and uh, i don't believe in the bible you know, I think that the Bible is not the word of God. I think that it is man-made and I think that the Bible is filled with corruption. Maybe at one point in time, some of its books were the word of God, but it got corrupted over time. And so therefore it's no longer the word of God and should not be seen as absolute divine truth. A lot of the evidence that people fall back back on, flat, that flat earthers fall back on is the Bible because they think that it's true by default. But in a future video, I will discuss why the Bible is not the word of God using um, my Bible of mass destruction that I showed off in a previous video, as well as some other things too. But that's a topic for another video. So let's just jump into why the earth is not flat. So reason number one, I, I say people say that the earth looks flat, therefore it is or the earth feels stationary, therefore it, it, it is. These arguments are very bad because it assumes that your perception of the universe, your perception of the world around you is 100% accurate. But we know that that's not true because whenever you're in a desert or whenever you are driving down a, a long road on a hot day, far down down the road, you see water you see a reflection of the sky. Or whenever you're looking out into the ocean, you might see a ship that is floating. These are called mirages. So your perception really is not 100% reliable. And to go even further, as a pilot, I had to learn spatial disorientation and uh, visual illusions. We have an acronym for it. We call the acronym ICE FLAGS. Inversion illusion, the Coriolis illusion, the elevator illusion, um, the false horizon, the, the leans, the uh, autokinesis, the graveyard spiral, and the somatographic. I'm not going to go into detail about what each, each of these illusions are, but the point is that your body can and sometimes will lie to, to, to you, right? The second argument is that eight inches square per thousand feet gives you a parabola, not a ball. So a lot of flat earthers, they are able to take their P900 cam cameras or any kind of camera that can, just, that, that can zoom in a lot and then, you know, zoom in on a horizon and make ships reappear. Ships that, that are so far away that you can't see them with your naked eye. And these flat earthers are not, not even just ships, also like lighthouses across a bay or uh, a skyline across a big lake. Basically, they say, oh, the distance from the camera to the object is so far that 
on a globe Earth, the object would be hidden behind the curvature of the Earth. And we know this because of this equation, eight inches squared per thousand feet is the curvature of the Earth. And this object would be such and such distance underneath the curvature. But they don't realize that eight inches squared per thousand feet gives you a parabola. So anytime you see a flat Earth, they're using eight inches squared per thousand feet. How about you use the actual equations to calculate the curvature of the Earth, and then you'll you'll see. Uh -huh. The third point, and this was a big one for me back in the day, solar and, and lunar e eclipses cannot be explained on a flat Earth with empirical ev evidence. And I'll even add to that, not even the moon fa phases. Whenever it came to the moon phases, the explanation that I was given was that the sun and moon both go around the flat Earth disk every day, but the but the sun every day gains 12 degrees on the moon and so that's how you get the moon phases and so when, when, whenever the sun is on one side of the disc and then the moon is uh, is 180 degrees to the opposite that's when you get a full moon whenever the moon is 90, 90 degrees off the, the the sun then you get a half moon and whenever it's 45 degrees off you get a crescent and then whenever it's you know z zero degrees then you get a new moon However, this is extremely dumb because when you think about it, you know, from every vantage point on Earth, from beneath these these two celestial bodies, no matter where the moon is relative to, to, to the sun, it will always be a half moon relative to us based on how we are see, seeing it. It's not really well thought thought out, to be honest. And then when it comes to solar and, 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 and lunar eclipses, they try to explain solar eclipses by saying that there's some third celestial object that we don't know know about that's you know obscuring the sun during these eclipses. However, they don't have any actual empirical evidence that such a thing exists. But when it comes to the lunar eclipse, there's just absolutely no explanation whatsoever. The fourth point is that low pressure and high pressure systems rotate due to the Coriolis effect, something that can only be possible on a spinning ball. The Coriolis effect is something that flat, flat earthers, myself included at, at the time, denied. We said that the Coriolis effect was fake, that it's not real. But meanwhile, when you look at actual weather that we can you know observe there are such things as low pressure systems and high pre high pressure systems and in the northern hem hemisphere the way that the wind travels around a low pressure system it travels inward upward and counterclockwise and for a high pressure system it, it travels outward downward and counterclockwise on a flat earth disc whether you want to say that that, that disc is actually a square or if it's just an infinite plane, either way, they cannot be explained on a flat Earth. The fifth point is that v VORs and DMEs have a line of sight lim limitation that gives them a, a limited range due to the curvature of, of the Earth, a limitation that would not be a problem on a flat Earth. A VOR is a very high frequency omnidirectional range, and DME is distance measuring equipment. Essentially, these two technologies use very high frequencies to triangulate your location relative to the station as well as your slant range distance to the station. However, these very high fre frequencies cannot pass through solid objects. So if there's a mountain between you and the station, you will not be able to receive the VOR. If there is, let's say, the curvature of the earth because you're really far away from the VOR you also will not be able to pick up the uh, signal but if the earth were flat <laughs> you would be able to pick up the, the signal really from anywhere and honestly this doesn't even just apply to uh, VORs and DMEs it also applies to just comms this limitation would not really ex exist the sixth uh, argument is that flights from one con continent to another in the southern hemisphere exist which would be impossible on a flat earth due to the distance and fuel requirements when it comes to the flat earth mo model these flights would be impossibly long and would, and would not be possible due to how much fuel it, it would take and just how unsafe it is to travel across that much ocean without any radar, without any, you know what I'm saying? Like, even whenever you factor in the jet stream and how the jet stream will push you even faster, you know, along a certain di direction, it's still too, too far and it still costs too much fuel. 
And then on top of that, airliners have to stay within a certain distance from airports or countries, or I can't remember exactly what, what the uh, regulation is, but if the earth were flat, traveling from South America to Australia would be impossible because the, the distance that you would be away from Australia or South America in the middle of, of the route would be so far that you would be outside of this range that the IKO has determined. And then the seventh argument is that WAS helps us correct, correct the ephemeris error of, of GPS satellites, an error that wouldn't exist if satellites were stationary and ground-based. If you don't, don't know, GPS satellites orbit the, the Earth and you know you need at least three satellites to triangulate your, uh, lo your location to give you latitude and longitude but you need four satellites to give you not only latitude and longitude, but also your altitude. The GPS satellites, while they are supposed to be on a set orbit, because they're not perfect, they might not be on their set orbit. They, they might be a, a little offset. So because of this, they have this thing called the ephemeris error. And so with a fifth satellite, we get something called RAIM or the Receiver Autonomous Whoa, ooh. Come on, C of double I. Oh. Oh. Integrity monitoring? Receiver autonomous integrity monitoring, right? Yes? <laughs> Receiver autonomous in integrity monitoring. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that allows us to have what we call an SBAS or a satellite-based aug augmentation si system. The SBAS for Europe, I believe, is EGNOS. And then India has their own SBAS. America, we have WAS or the um, Wide Area aug Augmentation S System. And the way it works is GPS satellites send their location data down to these reference state stations, which, which then calculate the ephemeris error. And then the reference stations send that error da data to the master state station, which then creates some uh, corrective data. And then that corrective data is then sent to an uplink station, which then uplinks the correction data to a geostate stationary satellite, which then sends all that correction data down to whatever GPS receivers are equipped with WAS. So if you have an aircraft, for example, that has WAS. Basically what I'm trying to get at is have a flat earth or try and ex try and explain why on a flat earth we need was you know because flat earth says that there are no no satellites floating above us so try to like we know for a fact that was exists so like try to explain and try to just justify the the existence of was especially since flat earthers think that the way that satellites work gps satellites work is they're like ground state stations that like shoot a GPS signal up to the firmament, the uh, dome up above us, and then it bounces off. And then, well, if these GPS satellites on the ground, if they're ground based and not moving, then there shouldn't be any ephemeris error to 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 begin with. So, you know what I'm saying? It like doesn't make sense on a flat Earth. So, a flat Earther try to explain all of this please. That's all I really got for this, this video. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها رفع سمكها فسواها وأخطش ليلها وأخرج ضحاها والأرض بعد ذلك دحاها